Allah Azza wa Jal, for example, commands in Quran in many places. One of them, for instance, "Ubudu Rabbakum, Ubudu Rabbakum." Enslave yourself to your master. If you want to know, we we study a lot of Quran. You know, you could study tafsir for years and years and years and years. And somebody, my teacher asked me actually, one time I was studying with him, and I'd been studying, not years, I was studying Qur'an with him for like six months, and he asked me, give me the summary of the Qur'an, one sentence. Actually, and I said, one sentence? He goes, okay, fine, two. So he wants a summary of the whole Qur'an in two sentences. And I'm thinking, I'm going, in my head I'm doing a review of the, the stuff he talks about all the time. How am I going to summarize the entire Qur'an in two sentences? And I, figured, I remembered what he said, and I used it, and he said, you're right. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> here's, what, here's what it was. Number one, accept Allah as master and accept yourself as slave. A lot of people accept Allah as master, but they still don't accept themselves as slave. Just accept it. Internalize that, that He is master, you are slave. Accept that. Number one. And after you accept that, the second sentence, accept that this guidance. This guidance is only beneficial to people who accept themselves as slaves. That's it. You say, Iyaka na'budu, you accept yourself as slave. Then what are you ready for? Ihdina sirat, guidance. Slavery and guidance is the summary of the entire Quran. The Quran began with slavery, Iyaka na'budu. It begins with slavery, and at the end again, he, may, he calls himself master, which alludes to us as what? If he's the master of the people, the people are his slaves. Ends with slavery. So he, this is the, the, the heart of the matter. A lot of people have no hard time accepting Allah as the creator. That's okay. That's not the hard part. Or accepting Allah as merciful, or as wise, or as powerful, or as one. All of that stuff's easy. Because you know, if you accept Allah as one, there may not be any implications on you. Allah is one, that's nice, I'm still gonna do what I'm gonna do. Allah is really merciful, great. I still have my life. But if you say Allah is master, then what does that make me? <laughs> that makes me slave. And to put it in very simple terms, the difference between a free person and a slave person is very simple. It's not a complicated subject. The difference between a free person and a slave person is, a free person does whatever he or she wants. What does a slave do? A slave cannot do what he or she wants. If a slave did what he or she wanted, then they would be considered free. The only thing that makes them a slave is they do what the master wants. If you accept that, if you accept that your will comes under the will of Allah, your will has to be submitted like a slave before the will of the master, then you've understood what this, deen, what this book is, what this message is. That's the summary of this message. It sounds very simple, I mean it takes five minutes to explain, but internalizing that is a lifelong struggle.